Hi, I'm Bonnie, Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. You can follow me on Instagram at Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. This is going to be floss tube number 25, but it's going to be focused on wool and wool applique and an introduction to a fun wool along that I'm going to be doing with my friend Lisa at Prims on Greenway. Now, we are going to be starting this June 1st. You can jump in after that. You can start wool before that. But we just wanted to get people excited about another form of needle art, whether you've done it before and maybe get back into it, whether it's just something that you want to do along with us, or if it's something that you have never done before, but want to start and try and see if you like it. I'm going to be sharing with you my finished projects. I have shared them all along in the floss tubes that I have done, but I wanted to show them all right now. Then I have some ideas for you to learn about wool, how to do it, how to get started. I'm going to inspire you as my goal. And then if you stay till the end, there's going to be something special. So um, please check out my friend Lisa at Prims on Greenway. She has a YouTube as well as an Instagram. And she has something fun too that she will be sharing. She was blessed with something. And so she has her portion and I have mine. We're going to be doing this together. And all the videos that we do about the wool along will be titled probably with the floss tube and number whatever it is but we will be using the hashtag even on our videos it will be hashtag wool along friends so if you do a wool project and you post it on instagram just add that hashtag wool along friends full disclosure i am not good at keeping up with checking and responding on the instagram posts that i have for the 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 stitch alongs that i have already started but i will be doing these videos and I'm going to do my best to engage and get involved in that. I tend just to yak and share and um, just stand back and, and look at the comments. But I'm going to do my best to get involved in this with Lisa. And we want to continue this. So it's not just a short-term thing. We are hoping that this will be a lasting thing and that we can share with you. I have done a lot of wool in the past, I have not stitched with wool recently, but I am excited to get back into it. So let me show you some of the projects that I already have done. And even I have a lot going on in my life at this moment. So I'm going to try my best to be calm. I did a floss tube video yesterday and then I ran off to work and didn't get it posted till late last night. Um, but it was showcasing partly um, this BenQ lamp and my thoughts on it and how I have really enjoyed using that. So that would be floss tube number 24. And I'm going to try to stay calm. I have all these things that are going on that I need to get back into, but I have a lot to share. And as always, my videos are long. So if I don't have the details of where I got the pattern, um, I didn't want to take the time to find all that before I did the video. Otherwise, it would never get done. So I will be updating as I go along. So um, let's just jump into it. Ask comments if you need to, and I'll do my best to get back with you. My very favorite wool project that I have done was one that I purchased a kit. I went to a vendor show, um, and Primitive Gatherings was there as a booth, and I bought this kit. So it comes from a book, but this is called Red Wear Crow Mat. And because I was new to wool at the time I purchased the kit, you can see I love Scrappy. And if you look through all of these, you can see there are many, many different um, wool fabrics. And I loved it for that purpose. And I enjoy doing the blanket stitch. Now, I'm just going to share these projects, then I'm going to share with you some more information. So if you're new and need the inspiration, please 
um, keep checking back on this video if it's too long because I will share all the information that I can. So this was a project that I didn't complete until recently, but I had started stitching it long ago. I will say right now, if you want to do wool, kits are the best way to start because you get exactly the fabric that you need for the project that you're going to do. Now, that is from, oh, see, I was, oh, there we go. Um, that is from the book called um, Autumn Gatherings. So that pattern is in the book. And this is how I do things. I try to group things together, but when I go to clean out my magazines, I will put a pattern that maybe was in a magazine in, in a book by that same author. So this is a project that I want to do as well. It was in Fawns and Porter, September 2012. So this, there's, there, if you look through, if you have magazines, if you have books, I would bet you've got a wool pattern in there because many artists do different needle arts and um, wool is wonderful. It is easy to do but just like anything when you're new you just need to learn the tips and the tricks and um, and just give it a try as you move along another so I guess this is my second favorite project I was trying to get all the Riley hair off of it this is usually up at our cabin and this is actually this pattern was a wool hooked rug that I just took that pattern and did it in Wool, um, wool applique. And I do like the overdyed, just like my threads that I use. I like the overdyed because it gives it a lot of different colors. And again, okay, so here's something fun. I didn't even notice it. This is thread that I used that's variegated. And then I do the stem stitch and the blanket stitch. I'm going to share with you a book by Lisa and Bonjean that um, is an awesome reference guide for you to get if you are not familiar with wool and need to learn the stitches. I will show you the book that I made that from, but this is also in that same book. This was a purse pattern, and I simply did it as a pillow. You can mix um, fabrics um, as far as this is all wool. This is just regular um, quilt quality fabric, and then I love doing different stitches. So this is a fun one, and this I just did a whipped stitch on the end, much simpler than doing the blanket stitch. That is from, oh, okay, here we go. I was pretty organized. You can see these are well-loved books. So this is one I've had for a very long time. This is Bittersweet Threads by Needle Love. Now, a lot of these books, because I've had them for many years, may not be available new, but a lot of books I have even purchased on the secondary market. So if you just search these books, quite often you will be able to find them used, hopefully for only a few dollars. So um, those two projects were from here. Now, um, okay, so I piled stuff up and we're gonna try to make it a little more organized. Okay, so now, a project that I made from this. Again, it's an older book, but this is Journeys by Whimsicals. And you can see there is a lot of wool. There is also a lot of quilt patterns in here. So this one is called Journeys. But I took this pattern. Whoops. I took this pattern. Um, and I did not make this exact thing. Probably because I didn't want to spend the money on getting a wool for the background of this, but I'm gonna share some tips with you. You do not have to use wool. You can choose to use, this is Osnaberg. So this is just a loose woven, woven fabric that's very inexpensive. If I was to do this now, I would tea dye it, and I may even tea dye it still. This goes in a regular size pillow. I am not currently using it right now. It was shoved in my cupboard but um, I used to have this in our trailer, in our fifth wheel trailer when we had it. So this is just a regular size pillow. And again, I just used fabric and you can see it's very wrinkled, but I just do the envelope style. I didn't even do the zipper. But um, again, what kind of stitching is that? Okay, so that's blanket stitching and just fun 
fun project, but much less expensive because I use the Osnabird in the back. Okay, so that's from that. Okay, here's something else I wanted to share with you. Whenever I get these videos together, I always think, oh, I gotta share this with my friends and this and this and this and this. And that's why I know they go along. But it's, this is just my heart that, um, so if you came to visit me, it would be like an all day affair because I would be sharing all this kind of stuff with you. In this same book, Journeys, um, this was uh, another hooked rug um, pattern, but I did it needle punch. So at the time that I did this, I had a ginger colored cat. So that was my cat pumpkin. And you can see that I changed up the colors, but I simply took that wool hooked rug pattern and did it in, um, in needle punch. And it's funny because I knew nothing about pinning and getting things nice and straight when I did this. So now I've watched Vana and I know that there's a lot of ways that you can get things straight. Am I going to redo it? Maybe not because it never bothers me until I show it. This is a frame that I just recently bought at Hobby Lobby. They have different sizes. And because I love Prim, I really like that frame. So there we go with that one. See, I'm still talking slow. That's a good thing. This is one that I have shared before. I know I got the the this pattern from a magazine, but I will have to look in my other old show notes to see what magazine it's from. I made this uh, probably 15 years ago, so it's an older one, but you can see my love of scraps and my love of doing hand stitching. So this is just simply, so that was the blanket stitch around the edging. I just put a couple buttons on there, but the fun thing whether or not I have a large piece of fabric, I love scrappy. So that has been one that I have loved and that's my style is just scrappy. Now, um, I'm going to save something else to the end because I'm, I want to try to keep this. I have so much to share and I need to not do it all, but I want to explain about wool, wool felt, and felt and the difference between those. So I have a project. These are all wool and I will read something to you in a few minutes about that. This is a project that I have shared before. Um, this was also from a magazine. So you see fabric, then you have wool, and then this is wool as well. I love the dimension that that had and I, I pretty much followed the pattern directly, but again it was from a magazine and this is what I did. So I went to hang this and I just pinned it like this. So next fall when I go to hang it, um, I have this sticking on there, but I usually just put a narrow dowel. I have a lot of different narrow dowels and I have them cut at all different widths. So each season when I go to put something out, I just go to my collection of dowels. I find that dowel, stick it through here, and then I hang this loop on each side of the dowel and then because it was matching I had it hanging on some wire thing that I had in my hallway so um, but that explains why that's there so I don't lose it now um, okay so we're gonna save that in a minute this is a big guy so this is something I know I have shared before this is from that same or let me show it to you and then I'll tell you because I know you can't hear me So this is from the book Journeys by Whimsicals, and I know that pattern is in that book. Now you will see wool gets eaten by moths. So I had not paid much attention to this project. Um, and so you can see it gets a little eaten. Um, so if you have moths that infest your home, you have to deal with it right away. There are ways around it, and I will share more about that at another time because we will, Lisa and I will continue to do these videos and share our tips and inspiration along the way. But that is one of the challenges with wool that you would not have if you were using regular cotton fabric. But this is a mix of, and this was one of the first projects that I did, but I only finished it recently because I just lost heart with it. But I used fabric and I remember, I remember stitching this and I had some issue, I can't remember what it was, 
but there's many different kinds of wool. This one is kind of more like burlap. It's a very, very thick weave and I enjoyed it. And again, I'm just going to be trying to inspire you because there is so much information that I would love to share, um, but it is not going to all happen on this one video. So let's hang that back here so you have something to look at. All right, now, okay, so, oh, here's something else. So I share this a lot because I use this constantly. This is another wool project, so wool blanket stitch. And I share this a lot because this was kind of the, ins I guess let's show it to you right way up. Okay. This is how you would open it. This is the inspiration for a lot of my needle books that I love. This was one of the first ones that I made. So a mix of woven, cotton, and wool. So um, that's something that I have made. Let's put that up there so I don't lose it. Okay. Oh, where did I put that? I piled everything on top of it. This is on the outside of my door to my sewing room. This is a mix of embroidery, wool. So this is, let me show you close. This pattern I believe is still available and I'll show you the pattern in a moment. But you can see embroidery, wool. What else do we have? Some more wool over here. And then I did cotton fabric cotton fabric, but look at sometimes the thickness of the wool. When I ironed it, it kind of shows right there, the seam allowance, but this is wool. So I just did um, an X and a French knot, but this is, this is available in all the seasons. I have the winter one partially done. All the embroidery is done. I still need to do the wool and then put this all together, but that one I probably stitched about 10 years ago. So that is the pattern. Let me take it out. I believe I still saw this on Crabapple Hill Studios website, but this one is autumn and all of them are beautiful. And I decided because they're framed in a wall hanging or pillow all different ways, I think I'm going to, because I really like the way that this one is framed. Oh yeah, it pretty much is the way it was in the pattern. I'm going to frame them all the same way just so there's consistency and I don't have to make decisions because sometimes decisions are just too much. Okay, good. My pile is getting reduced. Now, this is something, this is another form of wool needle art that I will share at another time because I need to get back into it. But again, this is really just to show you the possibilities, inspire you, and just kind of introduce you to what my history with wool is. This is wool fabric, but this is something called needle felting, and it is done with something called wool roving, which I'll share with you in a moment. Let's see, this was in my cupboard. Um, so it kind of gets, it pulls out a little bit, but that's just the nature of it. This is embroidery, and then I just simply did, um, I just, what did I do? Oh, and it got a little, look at it, got a little um, moth-eaten there but I just did a blanket stitch down the edge, did this, and actually I can tell because I have the blanket stitch done on these um, buttonholes, but I have not even finished. I needed to do more buttons to keep it down, but I need to do the blanket stitch around that, and I'll do a, a whip stitch on that, but it looks primitive as long as I don't have an infestation with moths. So if you see moths in the house, you gotta deal with them in your way. And I, because I do things naturally, and because I'm a Young Living essential oil distributor, I, I use Young Living for everything. And I'll figure out how I can share all that in another video. But today is not going to be that day. So I'd like to introduce you to what wool roving is. Just simply to introduce it to you, I will share more. And I would like to show a little demo of how I do something on a future video. It's not going to be this month. Because I'm addicted to color... And I was trying to do this as a business many years ago, not doing it now as a business, as far as um, making things and selling them. I have lots of colors and this is how I collect. So I purchased many of these colors. All those blues look the same, but I know that they are different because I found my receipt from Kindred Spirits. So let me show you. Um, so this is where it's from. 
And this was many years ago. So this is Kindred Spirits. Mm, there we go. Kindred Spirits in Ohio. Are they still in business? I hope so, because I love all this stuff. So Kindred Spirits is where I purchased much of my wool, much of my wool roving. Oh, and I just put that uh, down upside down. Now, you get a big bundle of it, but this was the way, because I probably have about seven of these trays filled with all different colors. This was a way that I could do my palette and that I could do my work as I did the wool felting. Now, it's called felting because as you're felting, I don't know the technical term, but felting is like when you bind something together. Where did I put that needle? There we go. These are the wool felting needles. Now, my kids, when I first did this, my kids were very young, and I would sit on the couch and do this, so they always joked around, and we did talk about, if you see one of these needles, we call them harpoons, definitely not something you want to sit on and nothing to play with. So they're very sharp. I know that there's many, and you can probably even get them now at Michael's and Joann's, but it is, it is like a small harpoon, and it's serrated, I think that's the word, so that as you poke it through, like if I push it up, I can feel those edges there. So as I would pull, and again, there's a lot more to this, and I use a big foam pad, I put the wool down, and then I will pull, like I will pull a bit of this off. This is just made with real lamb's wool, so and it's dyed, so then I would pull some of this off, and then poke, 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 and you're designing different things as you do it. If you do Pinterest and you just search um, wool roving you, and needle felting, you will find so many different things. There are ways that, that you can, I just do it on this type of a surface, but there are ways that you can make dimensional animals too. I've never done that, never planned to do it, but you never know. So let's put that harpoon away so that way I won't lose it. Now, there are different patterns that I have had, um, and I need to find the, the designer on that. I believe it's heart to hand, but I have all those in a separate place, but neat patterns that you should probably still be able to get now if you're into my style of wool felting. Now, the chair is full. We're going to see stuff crashing. Okay, so that is my just little introduction to wool felting. But I can show you some things that I have done. So this is a wool felted, a little wonky, but wool felted um, jar that I had made just to use some of this stuff up. And I put a real piece of wool there so that the needle could go here. Oh, I have one that I'm actually using. There's two different sizes of jars. Joann's has these. But this is great because you can get more stuff in here. Generally, I use this. So I've got one of my little finger things there stuck to the bottom. But I can use this as a pin cushion and I can keep my threads in here and I can take that with me and have that as like a project container. This is how I use one of mine, um, but I just use these pins. So these are all just the nice, I think they're clover pins. And then do I have a needle on here? No, usually I'll have a needle stuck in there as well. So just inspiration, remember, not how-to on any of this, but just inspiration. My mom um, and sister made these. They had received a bunch of wool, and it was it was leftovers from garment industry. Some friends gave them to her. But this was simply strips of wool that they, they did like a big jelly roll, round and round and round. But wool sharpens and cleans needles. So more than cotton... Um, I love using wool because it's sharpening and cleaning and it goes in beautifully. I love wool. So just some fun things. Now, so we've talked about wool. We've talked about wool roving. Now I want to introduce you to something that's less expensive, much less expensive, but has a similar look. So this is, I believe this pattern is still available. Let me show it this way. Um, so I use this as a table runner but it's by my window and it gets, it got faded. Would w real wool fade? Probably not, but I can tell he has faded much, but this was what I could afford at the time. I didn't even do a backing. So this was one of the first projects that I did, but 
It has beauty. I keep thinking I'm going to do another one in real wool, but um, I'm going to explain to you in a moment because I found an article this morning in a book. This does not have um, the woven, so the weft, whatever. Okay, I'm going to read it to you in a minute, but that's what it means. This does not have it. So this, this is, um, I always get them mixed up. Felted wool is one thing. Wool felt is another, and felt is something else. So this is felted. Oh, this is wool felt. Um, I am dyslexic in the brain. So this is a project much less expensive. So I want to introduce you to many, many different ways that you can invest in. You do not have to do um, the expensive wool. This is a book that I got, um, and I know I must have gotten it on sale because there's only one project that I want to make in here. Let me show you the project. Um, but it's, it's all about dimension. So she does a very, very good job of teaching you how to do something with this dimension. Most of the most of the projects in here are more of what I would call elegant. That's gorgeous, um, but I could primatize just about anything. But I was just flipping through the front of it and I found something perfect to explain to you. Most books will have something like this where they explain to you how to do wool and the basics to it. But this, so this is about felted wool. So I thought, perfect, because I need to learn this. I just jump in and do something. I don't always learn about it. Um, so she says, I am often asked about felted wool and how, and this is how I explain the difference in wool fabric. Felted wool is actually woven wool yardage that has a weft and a warp. I always get those words mixed up, but that's that's the weave, the weft, and the warp, which is which, I don't know, but that's, that's the weave. Um, when this yardage is felted, it is shrunk in hot water, followed by a high heat drying, causing it to constrict and become dense. That's very important because that way it doesn't fray on the edges. This fabric is easy to needle because the holes between the warp and weft remain. Once felted, woven wool yardage will not easily fray. Now, wool felt, that's what this is, wool felt, is made from, from wool roving. Remember, the, that was the, the loose wool that I showed you, which is pressed into sheets using hot water and high heat, causing it to become dense. This fabric is a bit more difficult to needle because unlike a woven fabric, it has no holes. So the benefit to the wool felt is that it is much less expensive. Some wool felt is actually a blend of 40% wool and 30% polyester and behaves well in a variety of applications because it has absolutely no fray. That is one of the benefits that I found in that. Craft felt is made from 100% synthetic materials. Some is even made using recycled plastic bottles, a much different feel and form. So that's the explanation. And again, this is by Deborah Gale. I can't say that last name, but good explanation. So I had, if you've, if you've stayed with me so far, this is something that you're gonna to wanna to stay with me to the end because I had a friend that gave me a box of wool felt and um, it was infested with moths. I dealt with it. I divided some up this morning and I want to share that with some people um, as a giveaway who may not otherwise be able to afford to do the wool. So, so that will be at the end. Now, um, a lot of stuff I'm going to share, so this I'm guessing this is going to be about an hour, but in other videos, I shared how I took Osnaberg fabric and I did tea dyeing. So this was something, I had a curtain, yep, this is my curtain that I had up in our trailer, and it's still great fabric, but what I did is tea dye. Now, I tea dyed this one where I pre-moistened it. So it was pre-moistened, I put it in the tea bath, and I let it dry. This one I did, and it was dry. I wanted to see what it would look as a difference. This was dry when I put it in, so it soaked up much more of that tea and has a darker look. So those would be great ways to use as the background. 
the background is what can make the wool project that you do quite expensive because wool is expensive. So I wanted to share with you different options and different ideas. So that's why I usually don't wear my glasses. Although when I'm done with this, my eyes are always so tired, but it reflects. Here's another thing that I want to share with you. This is a pattern that I have had for a long time. This is, it's a set and it's by Heart to Hand, which is Kathy Campbell. Um, and I went to a vendor fair and I loved looking at her projects. This is, this is one that I've carried around with me. It's probably not a great color coffee, but I'm looking for a perfect border to go with this project because who knows if I'm ever going to get to it. But it is, let me show, I'm not going to take them all out, but that is one set. This is another set, but you can see they're all different backgrounds. This is another set, and this is another. So, I think she may have done it on wovens as the background, but at the time, what I had was cotton fabric. So, I have cut these out from long ago, and these are all different squares. I have all the squares cut out, just regular cotton fabric, so that will cut down on the cost of doing that whole quilt, but they're all just they're all it's going to get blown out but it's all different cotton fabrics each square will be different but it will work together if I ever get to that project and um, make a beautiful quilt but that's why when Lisa asked me if I wanted to be a part of this I was like yes because it will get me going on doing some of the wool projects that I have had languishing and not doing I tend to get saturated in different hobbies between beading, quilting, um, embroidery, nail cross stitch, wool applique, wool roving, gardening, and then I've got work. I've got work. So um, there's so many different things that I want to do and I'm excited to get back into it. Another thing, this is a pattern that I've had for a long time. Maggie Bononomy is amazing, um, but I picked this up at uh, the Road to California Quilt Show one time, but this is a small wall hanging quilt. Now, instead of using wool as the background on all of this, because that would make it more expensive, what I pulled out was some flannel. So flannel is something, even Lisa Bonjean will do that as well. Flannel is a great, um, affordable way to do a backing for a wool project because you, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know from standing back if it was wool or flannel, and flannel flannel is what I can afford for that much that much um, product. So I'm just going to go through the stack as it is. I had made a purchase on Country Stitches Online, which is Brenda Gervais' website. You can find a lot of out of print or hard to find patterns there, and that's where, when I was looking through. I am pretty darn sure this one is still available, um, and that's that's on Brenda Gervais' site. The name of it, I don't know. If I if I find it, I will put it in the drop down notes later. This is one that I've been wanting for a long time, and I just purchased this. So Santa's sweet treats, but you can see it's a smaller project. But I love gingerbread, and so that will be a perfect project for me. I may do it wool, or I may do it wool felt. We'll just see what I have when I go to do that. All right, I am making progress. Now, my stack of books. I am not, I have shown many, many of these books in different videos that I have done. So I'm not going to show you all the insides. I just wanted to inspire you and show you if you're into the style that I do, then whether you find these new or used, they would be great resource books for you with a lot of great patterns. Sometimes I will go on Pinterest and I'll see, or I'll see a new book that a designer has out, and I want to see, are there enough projects in that book for me to purchase it? So what I will do is I will Google the name of the book, and I will click images, and then it brings up it brings up a lot of images, not necessarily from that book, but I can hunt and peck, and I enjoy the hunt. So that is one way that I can find um, what pictures are in that book. 
The other thing I just do is Pinterest where I'll just Pinterest and I'll search the name of that book and then see what comes up. A lot of these books I have purchased on sale. Um, some of them I have been gifted and some of them I picked up at my quilt club. They will have books for like 25 cents or a dollar. So um, these are just some of my books. This is one that I shared about um, pre-Valentine's Day. I had all of these projects that I wanted to do and I did not get them done this year, but there's hope for next. This project I was going to do with Osnaberg in the background, wool or fabric here, and then who knows what, probably a cotton fabric in the back. So you don't have to do exactly what they have. Any, any of these Needle Love, um, any of these Needle Love books will have a collection of wool, embroidery, um, all, all kinds of projects, rug hooking, but you take a project and you make it the way you want to. Now, I have shared about this book before and shown you, let's see, I want to say um, floss tube number 22 or 23, I shared with you about all the insides of this book. This would be the number one resource. If you could only afford one book, this would be a great one because Lisa Bonjean is like the queen of wool applique. On my playlist, I am starting to put wool applique videos. So on my channel, if you click home, I have, I have lots of different playlists and then I have a playlist with wool. Lisa, if you follow her, she is, I think, Stitching with Lisa, something like that. Um, but she shows you tips and tricks. This is just a huge resource book of how to, what to do with wool, how to do it, how to do the stitching, projects, patterns, amazing. This would be a reference guide for you to have um, that would be well worth the, the, the money that you would spend. Now, any book, any book, by Maggie Bonanami. I'm going to show you each one. Any book that you can find, whether it's out now or you can find it used, any book is amazing. Um, I just went looking through this one this weekend. So Comfort Zone. This is one that Lisa and I both want to make something from. This is A Day at Sunnybrook. A Day at Sunnybrook. This is with my hand or with my hands. I have been collecting these books by Maggie for many, many years. So um, this one I think is still available. And then Thistledown Moon. Look at that. Gorgeous. So wool background, fabric, I mean uh, woven background, fabric, and wool all mixed together. So you can do what you want to do. So those are books by Maggie. Now two things. In my playlist, Maggie has a way she does stitching um, not with a blanket stitch. She does a much simpler way. She uses thread. So on my playlist is a very short video by her. But Carol Saltbox Stitcher did a tutorial. I haven't watched it yet, but it's a tutorial on how she, how she does wool applique the Maggie way. She has been to classes that Maggie has been to. So that would be another great um, resource for you to check out. Now, a little more modern, maybe, or a little more cutesy. Um, books by Bonnie Sullivan. Um, what is her? All Through the Night. This is the, this is the reason I wanted that. I really want to make this project. Um, but lots of good things. I've also gone on her website and purchased separate wool patterns um, that she has on her site. So I have quite a few of her things. I just haven't done them yet. This one I picked up a couple years ago, and I love this. This I got mixed up. So we've got Kathy Cardiff and Kathy Campbell. I got those two mixed up, but this is a fantastic book. Um, so this one, A Cottage Garden by Kathy Cardiff. Then I picked this one up on sale at Joann's. It's, it's not my typical. So whimsical wool applique, but I can take something that may be bright and I can make it more primitive. Or you, if you do more bright, you can take something primitive and do it more bright. Um, now, Sue Spargo. I have a lot of different things in magazines by Sue Spargo. She is known for her brighter, almost like a tribal, whimsical look with her. She is like a signature style, Sue Spargo. So she has many, many different things out. Not this bright, but 
just truly unique and amazing. Now, um, I've shared about these before. These are both available. Anything by Rebecca L. Smith. She has several books out, and if you go on her website, she has several individual patterns, and she may even have some kits. Both of these would be great resources. Um, I, I got this magazine for years and years, Primitive Quilts and Projects. Almost any, any one of them will have a wool project in there. Then, this is one that I picked up used, Primitive Christmas, because I want to make these stockings. Um, and then just about everything else in here. Then, when I went down to Primitive Gatherings, they still had this magazine available. This was October 2016, because Lisa... Um, was featured in here and they had this sample well I'm sure they not just a sample I'm sure it was this quilt hanging in the store and I loved it so again I think they even call for just wovens or cottons instead of wool but this okay so this is a close-up so you can see there's blanket stitching around there um, and then this this is the project so just fun, different things that you can do. Wow. Wow, that was a lot. Okay, 41 minutes. What else do I want to share? Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, so here's, here's what I have as a giveaway. What I want to do as a sharing thing. Because when I was, like, cross-stitch, you can, you can get cross-stitch supplies very inexpensively. There are tons of free um, patterns available. You can go to Hobby Lobby and get very inexpensive, whether you use linen or Ada cloth, and then you can get DMC. So you can do cross-stitch very inexpensively, or you can do it very expensively. But wool, there are kits. So uh, Christy at Daisy K's Primitives has shared where she has purchased some wool applique kits from Etsy, and she said that they are very affordable. So go follow her and check out some of her past videos and find out where that is. I have a supply of wool, so that's not something that I have pursued. Two things. So Michelle, it is Michelle, right? Michelle, I know you follow me too. Yeah, Michelle at Under the Wool and Willow contacted Lisa um, Crimson Greenway and has some books that she is going to share with her to use as a giveaway on her video. But I wanted to do a giveaway to get people started. So this giveaway is going to be open, it, again, because of cost of postage for right now, and not by choice, postage is very expensive out of the United States. So for right now, United States resident um, or United States address, um, over 18 because legally you can give me your address, mailing address. I would love for you to be a subscriber, but I'm not going to check on that. But also, I would love it if you only entered this giveaway if you would otherwise be limited on if you could do these wool projects with us because they are with the wool felt. Um, and it, so this is not the wool. This is wool felt, so less expensive. Here's the other thing that I need you to know about this. When my friend gave it to me, she gave me a big collection. It had all been in a plastic bag because it had gotten moth infested. So I took care of it my way. But this is what you also need to know. I am comfortable with this. This has been in my house. I have it. I would use it. Because I do natural stuff. I washed it. I do Young Living. I'm a rep for Young Living. But this is... Um, this is a cleaner that we use and it has um, essential oils in it, real essential oils. So it has cinnamon, lemon, clove, rosemary, and eucalyptus. Those are essential oils. I used, this is, this is a concentrate. This is how I clean my house and it's not going to give me cancer um, because I, I do natural stuff. So when I washed it, I washed it in several loads on hot. So that's where it is shrunken up. It was all nice and flat but it got all kind of shrunken up. Um, so that's the other thing. I washed it in hot, I washed it with that, and then I used our Young Living um, laundry soap too. And then I put it through the dryer. I've had it for probably six months or so, 
I've had it in a plastic box, no bugs. So that's the other caveat. I don't know if that word means anything. That is the other thing to know, or I guess a disclosure. It had in the past been infested, but actually any wool could be. So here are the three. I, I did just like a grab bag where I took some, some fabric, just chopped it up, and I put it in three different collections that I'm going to do on this video. Now, um, I'm going to title them, but you also need to know, I know there's so many rules, but Lisa and I talked on this. We want to both do this the same, and because we're starting the wool along June 1st, after Stitch Mania is over, we, want, we wanted people to know that they would have this soon. So today is May 19th. I will get this video up by the 20th. So in seven days, uh, 20, 26. So by the midnight of June, by midnight of May 26, this will be ended. So the other thing is if, if our videos come up, you got to watch them quick to see are we giving something away because it's a shorter time. She will have that same rule. So I am, because I'm not sure when I'm going to get this posted, I will say by midnight of May 26, you have to comment. I will comment on your comment and then I will have you email me and send me your address and I will mail it to you. So again, in the United States, I just want to make this all clear because I don't want someone to get all excited and to see, oh, it's not really wool. It's just wool felt and it's all shrunk up. So this, this will be, so don't say giveaway um, in that. So just do a comment. You don't have to do a sentence, but just do a comment. I will, I will select different names and then I have three giveaway bags, but they're just grab bags. They're all different, but I'm going to show you one. So put it in the order because if I collect, if I select you, the first one that you have put on there, that will be the one that you get. So, and then if that one's gone, then the next person I choose, I would like to choose, see what they have as their first. You can put all of them in there, but put your favorite one first in case that's the one that you get. I tried, I tried to do these kind of randomly different equally. So this one I thought of, so this is grab bag. This one is grab bag one. Um, you can see some pieces are bigger. They are kind of weird because when I washed them, what happened is this shifted and oh, I knew that this was going to be a challenge, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay. So there are bigger pieces, but these could be backgrounds. I would iron it. So the edges were looser. The middle was tighter. So again, that's why this isn't like, woohoo, it's all wool. Nope. This is just an affordable, sweet way to get started. This is grab bag one. So I saw these as more spring type colors these as more Christmassy colors. Oh, and one thing fell too. So this is kind of how they are. You know, they're wrinkly, they're puckery, but you can iron it down a little, but it's not going to take that pucker out. It's just a way to start, even to make something for kids or just to do something with a style. Some pieces are bigger. So this one is a bigger piece. I thought that could be a background. So again, it's just a way to try to bless people. So this is grab bag number one. You can see those colors. Now, grab bag number two. That first one probably has the most in there. This is grab bag number two. These are more primitive, so we've got spring and then kind of Christmassy colors. But also, it's they're seasonal, so a red, white, and blue. So it could be Americana, it could be primitive, it could be spring, but again, some larger pieces and some smaller pieces, but see, this is how it is. So it is what it is, and one or two may have little holes in there, but again, no active bugs as far as I know. I have not seen anything in there. Then this is grab bag number three, and this is what it is. So different spring. And again, these are bigger pieces of Americana um, and then some spring colors. So that was just something that I wanted to share with you. I have, if we keep doing these, I have more ideas of other giveaways that I would like to do just to bless people. But that's, that's what I did. So again, um, say grab bag one, grab bag two, grab bag three, however you want to do that in whatever order you would prefer to win them. 
you have to comment by midnight of May 26th. Even if I made a mistake and said June, it is May 26th, midnight. Respond. Oh, that was the other thing. You have three days to respond so that we can get it to you quickly or move on to the next person. So we didn't want this to be like, oh, so many rules, but more of the excitement of we wanted to get this out to you, bless you quickly, rather than have it languish forever. So hopefully that is clear. Hopefully you understand why there are so many rules. It is truly with the heart that I want to bless you with this. And then Lisa has some things to bless you with as well. So um, that's what we've got there. So I've already been looking because I had people comment on my other floss tube videos. Just with telling me, were they interested in doing the wool along so we could get an idea how much interest there was. And um, just know that all our videos will be titled hashtag wool along friends. You can post your, your projects on Instagram, ask questions along the way, um, and then we'll just try to help and inspire you. And I will do another video with some more information on there. So this was really just introducing and giving you a little taste of what I have done. I'm looking at my notes to see if I shared everything with you. Like I said, kits are a great place to start. Flannel or woven fabric as a background. Um, there we go. A lot of different places. Look through what you've got. Now, thank you guys for sticking with me in this. Now, this is what I call the good stuff and my faith journaling with God, how I do my faith. And because I had just done a long video yesterday and I've got all these things going on, my son is here visiting right now and my husband's home from work. So I want to go and be with them, but I thought I don't want to leave you without something sweet to share with you. And I, this is just one of the devotionals that I love. Um, I just looked up in the index. I looked up the word that I wanted and I read it and I thought, yes, this is exactly what I want to share today because I feel like my strength is is depleted because I've been doing a lot of different things just like many of us in the midst of a world that's um, changing um, and in the midst of, of going through hard times we all have different personal things going on different responsibilities blessings hardships different things and lately I have felt fatigued but I have good reason for it. If you listened to my videos before about just making a trip, a drive out to Colorado, a drive back, back into work, and in the midst of trying to catch up with stuff in my house, I am feeling exhausted. So um, I'm doing everything I can to get my strength back and to get my rest. And now back on my, my vegetable eating diet that I need to do. I just got back from the grocery store this morning and got a whole cart full of a good healthy stuff to get in on because you know when you're stressed you tend to stress eat and that's not good or it's not good for me so um, this one I chose was on strength so this is what I want to share with you um, strength God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble that's Psalm 46 1 then the Lord is faithful he will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one second Thessalonians 3 3 don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And it's funny, I'm looking out at my son, um, who is a lefty, and he would always say, why is it always God's right hand? I know there is a reason for it to be God's right hand, but he was a lefty. So I always think of that. I always think of my guy um, when I read that verse. Now, this is the devotional. God, when I have nothing within me to press on, be the strength that keeps me going. You are the one I lean into. Thank you that I don't have to be able to move mountains on my own. I don't have to conjure up the courage to face today in my own strength. I don't know if I could do it if I tried. I need you to be the source of my energy when it feels like I have nothing to give. Thank you that you are faithful in answering me and meeting me right where I am. And then the question, what makes you feel strong? So I think 
that's right there at the end where it says meeting me where I am. I've talked before about if God has a plan for my life, I would be much better off if I focused on him. The verse about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added onto you. We are supposed to meditate on God's word, just to soak ourselves in with God's word. Yet I get so distracted and I have been kind of falling into a bad habit. Instead of exercising and doing a devotion before I go to bed, I will be distracting myself here in my room until I'm so tired I lay on the couch and fall asleep. It is a bad habit because first I'm not exercising and I'm not ending my day. I should begin during my day and end it in God's word. I have been developing some bad habits that as a result, my strength is lower. So I need to get focused on what I need to do. I have to be proactive in a hard world where we are being pushed and shoved by good things and bad things and things. We need to be proactive. We need to stay on our feet. We need to stay healthy, body, mind, and spirit and keep moving forward. So that's what I love. I love that idea that I will always be focused on my Jesus. Well, quite often I'm distracted and I'm worried and I'm stressed and I let the things of the world pull me away. Yet God will also meet me where I am. And he, if I call on him, he will help me do what I need to do. But how much better, just like kids, if we tell them what not to do, yet they do it and something happens, are we going to say, well, I told you so, figure it out yourself. No, <laughs> we're going to swoop in and pick them up and um, help them and hopefully not cross any boundaries. We need to help them be strong too. So that's where God does. God knows he's sovereign. He is amazing. He is awesome. He is my strength. So I need to get healthy in body, in mind, and in spirit, and stay focused on what I should be doing. So there we go. Um, excited for you to join in along with us. Comment and let us know. Um, you know, if you're doing wool projects, not everyone does Instagram. I don't always check on Instagram because a lot of times, because I'm such an introvert, I can do these videos and then I can go to work and then I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to do anything. I just want to be in my little room and stitch. So that's where quite often I don't get back and respond always or, or choose to do Instagram all the time. So, um, but that's life. That's, that's, that we do what we can do. So there you go, guys. Um, pray that you would choose joy. Nevertheless, I pray that God blesses you. And I thank you for doing the stitching journey with me and being a part of my life. I had shared on the last floss tube how important when I was I was out of state and really focused on doing some hard stuff, those comments, even though I have still not responded to them, how much those meant to me because it was like my stitching family was with me even though I was not in my home. And I value that so much. So thank you guys and God bless you.